Ah, uh, yes, my friend. America was built by innovators and dreamers, people like Edison, Henry Ford, Steve Jobs, the guy that invented Chuck E. Cheese, and you. It's the inventors and entrepreneurs all around us, people like you, that make America such a great country. This month, LegalZoom celebrates innovation by helping you launch your dream. Apply for a patent to secure your invention. That way, nobody can steal it. Register your trademark to protect your products and services. Incorporate or form an LLC and launch your business dream. Just call or visit LegalZoom.com and they will take care of you from start to finish. They've already helped about a million businesses get started right. Hey, man, that's good for the economy. Celebrate innovation with LegalZoom and for a limited time, get a special price on trademark, copyright, and patent applications by using the referral code MORE, M-O-H-R, at checkout. Protect your creations and launch your dream at LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom can provide self-help services at your specific direction or they can connect you to an attorney, but they're not a law firm. Don't forget to use that referral code MORE, M-O-H-R. Get yourself set up, man. All-in-one platforms that make it easy to create a professional website, blog, portfolio. That's what you need. Squarespace, that is it. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform. Website, blog, portfolio. Don't you want a portfolio? Don't you want a website? Use Squarespace. You can get an online store. You can sell merch. You can get more of your t-shirts. I sell them on my website. You want to know why? Squarespace. Squarespace includes hosting, analytics, 24-7 support, even includes a free domain name when you sign up for a year. It's easy. With responsive design, your website automatically scales to fit perfectly on every device. Every single Squarespace template has its own customized mobile view, you guys. It's $8 a month for the standard plan. Whatevs, $16 for their unlimited plan, getting better, $24 for the unlimited plan and the online store. That's the one I'm getting. I want an online store. I want to sell weird things like toenails for a free trial. Just go to squarespace.com. When you're ready to purchase, click enter an offer code under pricing at checkout. Use the offer code JAY5 for 10% off. That's all you got to do. JAY, the number five. Or go to fakemustache.com or podcast1.com. Click on the Squarespace banner on the More Stories page. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle with either that you will like your world. You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. You're on a juice cleanse right now. I'm on a raw food cleanse. Like Woody Harrelson? Uh, does he do that stuff? He only eats raw food, and uh. his uh, wife is made entirely of hemp. <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, she's a little hemp person. Yeah, I get these like juices and salads delivered to my house. It's already starting off great. I can tell people are like, never mind, she is interesting. <laughs> no, it is interesting. <laughs> Don't tap out on me, Murphy. I'll I'm let, not, you, I'll let I'm you know not. if it sticks. You, uh, I did a juice cleanse a couple times yeah. and it makes me pee out of my butt. It's bad. I need a starch. Like I can't possibly go without a starch. In yeah. My you day. just need some food during the day. I feel like that's like this thing gives, they deliver me salads and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. What do you mean? You don't know if it comes to your house. It does, but I just it. don't know why I'm doing, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where you just go, oh, I need a change and I need to make myself better. So I'll, I'll give this person money and they'll make me better. You give me money, I'll fire you. I'll give you pep talks with right. diamond push up. Yeah. We'll figure something out. All right. You, uh, my wife said, oh, good. I like Morgan Murphy. She's the only female comic whose comedy isn't vaginally based. Oh, that's sweet of her. It is sweet of her. Yeah. And then I said, she's exactly right. Like, there's no, uh, you're, com- you, you really stand alone from yeah. female comics. You're just an actual comic, not talking about your private parts. 
Well, you, yeah. Like you're really funny. You're, I like, pa- you know, Paula Poundstone always talks about her vagina. <laughs> no, I mean, the ones that are up and running now that are very successful, that have very, yeah. you know, are I'll very ta- popular. I, talk about, I actually do talk about my, my stuff. Well, yeah, you got to flaunt I it. I talk about, you know, until you talk about your life. And sometimes, right. you know, sometimes things go into you and you talk about that. They're giving you the light. I'm sorry. <laughs> the oral light. <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone asked me once, like, you talk about shitting a lot. I'm like, well, it's, I do it every day. Mm-hmm. So I have to start, hopefully, yeah. all with me, with the, the pots of coffee. What the hell's going on <laughs> out people here? People are moving in next door. The guy moved in next door. You didn't see it when he pulled up. He opened the back of the U-Haul. His kids were in the <laughs> Yeah. That's what I told her This is a nice neighborhood. Why is someone driving his own moving truck? Uh, I don't know, but it's, I'm sure he's going to be a delightful neighbor when he's got a, a kid in a Catholic school uniform in the back of his U-Haul. I think that's how, that's when Keith Morrison comes in and says, but why? Should we close the door? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so you're going to be on Twitter all of June. You've already promoted Yeah, I'm going to be on Twitter me. June 3rd to June 17th. Um, I'll be on Twitter, and you can follow me there at was... Morgan underscore Murphy. There's no underscore, is there? Yeah, there is. Really? Yeah, I don't know who, what, more, who Morgan Murphy is. Some a-hole. Yeah. Somebody that eats meat and doesn't do juice cleanses. Someone that has nice, Yeah, someone who doesn't groups. have their priorities straight. Yeah. But why, I, you do the juice cleanse because you feel like uh, self-improvement, self-flagellation? Um, you know, to be very honest, it's like, it's so, it's like very vanity based. I just, uh, I'm taping this thing in May and I, like an hour of my stand up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I just feel, you know, I've been working on a TV show for the last two years, just sitting at a table. So I've been feeling gross. So I just decided to. So you drop like, you just lose a little weight, get, and your skin cleans up when you do. Your skin cleans up real good. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just. You have nice skin anyway. Or maybe. I didn't last week. What were you writing on? Two Broke Girls. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You seem, it seems like comics that you wouldn't expect, uh, I don't want to say you're an alternative comic, because to me you're not an alternative comic, but when I've seen you do comedy, it's been in an alternative room. Does yeah. that make sense so far? Sure. It seems like the alt, quote unquote alternative comics keep landing these jobs and lining up to suck from the corporate teat happily behind everybody's back. Yeah, I don't even feel like I do it behind anybody's back. I mean, I, I like writing and, uh, it's a fun, it's a very like goofy show to write on. It's very, it's just like a lot of big jokes and I like writing jokes. I like, you know, I like jokes. It's like, it's so silly and fun and why not, you know? Is it weird when you, when you start, when that's like your tablet, like big, funny, goofy jokes yeah. and they got like goofy outfits and stuff. Yeah. Garrett Morris is on it, right? Yeah, Garrett's on yeah, it. Yeah, so you can, he, you can just write him like he flies in, literally like flaps his wings and flies in. He like, flies in, does like a drive-by joke and they're, he, they're so fun to write. Like there's, his stuff is so fun to write. Like Jennifer Coolidge's stuff is so fun to write because it's just, it's just character stuff and, you know, you, they can say almost anything I mean, does the network ever give stuff. you a note and you think to yourself this is where you draw the line After yeah the- yeah yeah well no I, you know the notes that i get i'm always curious about are like oh you can't say mcdonald's you know and we're like well, yeah. i think i'm pretty sure we just said like dick in my face or something whatever whatever we got away I with remember that episode. yeah but uh but um i'm outside with a dick in my face yeah and then he left. yeah it's uh it's it, it, so that's the stuff that I'm always curious about, like the legal, the legal aspect of like naming products and things like that. It's weird when you like write. You can't a, say Vicodin. You can't. You have to say oh, like painkillers or big whatever. Pharmaceutical, yeah. right? Yeah. So you write on two broke girls. How does somebody that's a comic get a yeah. job? Because it's a not, it's a desk job, and you're yeah. like kind of you can't just go. I'm not into it. I just because comics i think by nature we have many many days where we're like yeah i'm not really into it i'm just yeah. gonna lay in bed in my pajamas i'm in my pajamas right now so how do you you're just obliged to go to this place and write jokes and crank them out yeah i think because i started writing for shows when i was like 21 started writing for crank anchors and uh and i just I don't know. I needed money to live and I got offered a writing job and I was like, that's, that's more than enough money to live on. So I took the job and, and I've just been used to getting up and going to a job ever since. Who offered you the job? Whitney? Um, oh, on Two Broke Girls? Yeah. Uh, Michael and Whitney, I had like a meeting with and then, uh, and then they offered me the job. Yeah. Do you have to, they always say, and I don't know because I'm lazy and I can't write anything that's not about me. Yeah. 
they always say like you have to write a spec script and you got to hand in like your two broke girl script and then they read it. Sure. Is that what you had to do? I mean, I didn't write a two broke girl script, but they did read. Uh, they did read something that I'd written, and I'd written it like eight years ago or nine years ago. So I was like, I didn't even. I went, when I when I saw it on the table when I walked to the meeting, I was like, oh shit, I don't even know what's in that. Like I did. I don't even think I knew how to structure a script at that point. What was the script? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. It was called Quinn. It was, a, it was like kind of autobiographical about um, just a girl out of college. I broke, wish was a, doctor, about right? a broke chick out of college. Uh, oh, so then it worked. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. And, and I like kind of grew up in a very like the not rich one of a very rich family. So I also had the perspective of like what really rich people are like. How does that work out? How are you the, how are you the outlier in a rich family? My dad is one of eight kids and I grew up very wealthy. And then he kind of, sorry, he kind of lost it all. He lost all his money. But all of his, all of his siblings are like, you know, super rich. Like there's a Murphy jet and stuff. And uh, yeah, so all my cousins are, uh, are grew up very wealthy. And then I, I was just, with me and my, I was, I'm like the only Jewish Murphy. I'm the only, only child. I'm the only one who didn't grow up without money. Like, so. So your dad marries a Jew. My dad married a Jewish artist. Yeah. Loses all of his money. Yeah. He's put a big, big Irish Catholic family in out of Oregon, big lumber, lumber business. Oh, you're, so you're from Oregon. Yeah. The most beautiful state, not named Hawaii, that I've ever driven through. It's I, amazing. I drove, uh, west to east to get to Spokane along the Columbia River. Yeah. And it was like being on mushroom. It's amazing. I was, and no one lives there. I don't yeah. get it. I feel, it feels, uh, when I go back, it's like it's LA and, and, and Oregon feel like home. Like the drive from Portland to the coast is so soothing to me. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Why don't more people live in states like Colorado and Oregon? Why do you think that is? Why is everyone like smashed into New Jersey, smashed into LA? Like people, live in like indio and zizix but we can't fill out like oregon i don't know like nobody's in bend nobody's in grants pass i don't have an answer right grants pass is nice yeah yeah those three towns i knew (laughs) but if i didn't show you my hand you would have been like wow jay knows a lot about oregon he's cool (laughs) we should hang out uh oregon ducks fan yeah big ducks fan more importantly you know so much about boxing and you tweet all the time about boxing and you're a great twitter follower for all the dudes out there yeah. I want to follow a really funny person. Who want to m- fill the holes left by people who unfollow me when I start tweeting about sports. Yeah, I get it too. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll live tweet like UFC fights. People yeah, are like, yeah. they're killing my timeline. I'm like, well, I told you I was going to be doing it. Yeah, I get it. Ri- I, I, I'm sort of like, I'll get very like, hey girl, to my friends on there, like real girl like, and then I'll, you know, and then I'll start tweeting about the playoffs. Yeah, and like, people you are and like, Amy Mann are like tweeting puppy photos. Yeah. I'm like, look at this cat. It's yeah, hanging yeah. off of a watermelon. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, Sergio Martinez is hot and he yeah. has a blistering left hook. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot. Yeah, I tweet a lot about how hot. That's why I like, uh, you ever go to Outsports, the uh, the gay sports website? Or Am I my, on it? Yeah, are you on Are you? I don't know. I it's just like, nervous it, for a second. I just like it because it's, it's, I mean, it's just, it's kind of about gay athletes and stuff and about sports, but like, I kind of found that when they don't have big stories to talk about they'll be like look at these hot players on this team yeah it's kind of exciting that is exciting because for a girl watching or like a gay guy watching you get to watch and you're into sports and you like the game but then you also get to go like i'd fuck that guy i'd fuck that guy but you have odd taste like sergio martinez the fighter i get it he's kind of like an argentinian mm-hmm. jim caviezel and i've actually yeah. tweeted that to you i don't want you to think yeah I'm like just some no hat. no and that's my only sergio martinez joke but it is uh but then also then like before we were on the air you're like joe kim noah so hot I think he's really cute, yeah. And I think most people think he looks like a monster. No, I think he's exotic looking. And, and exotic looking is one thing, but, but you don't think you know he looks like I'm a kid. I had I was just like a 16-year-old girl with Jason Kidd posters on my wall. Like, And he looks um, like a monster. He, he is a monster. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was – I don't, I don't have – is he look, on that? I'm, I'm not. not... Get, the, the, the one thing I think everyone that knows me can agree on is like my taste in men is not phenomenal. Like even even when I pick them out like physically, so it's fine. Like I don't I don't care. I just I just go. Oh, I like that guy. I mean, I'll, my favorite boxer right now is uh, Gennady Golovkin, the Kazakhstani guy. You tweeted about this guy. I tweeted about Gigi, him forever right? ago. I, I'm Two just G's? letting. Is yeah, that the guy? G-G. Yeah, you yeah. were fired up about this. guy. I've been fired up about this guy for a long time. I'm just gonna just gonna say that I got in. You know. B- people will know and they'll be like i like him first and i'll say no that i liked him first but i love him he's adorable it's like he you're looks... listening to bad brains in like 85 and you're like i was way ahead <laughs> yeah of you i was guys way ahead of you guys i saw him on like some fox sports west like fight and i was like i'm into that guy i flew out to new york to see him in like the middle of like a triple like an hbo like triple header and is that the guy that i tweeted you i said looks like a less downsy costa zoo 
That's so funny because I think he looks like a downsy Justin Long. <laughs> That's so funny. I can't believe you said that because I think Justin Long just looks downsy. Oh, no, he doesn't. I don't know how I, I didn't have another link. <laughs> I, me and Justin Long auditioned for the same part. Oh, really? And but uh, the guy from uh, Broken Lizard was meeting people at. Um, was it some? Was it part of someone's friend? No. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> no, actually, it was the lead about oh. a guy who has to give uh, like a semen sample because he can't get his wife pregnant. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm living this right now. I'm shooting my wife. There's progesterone in that refrigerator, and I inject my wife with progesterone because we want another one. Uh, because I have very low yeah. sperm count. So, like, actually what was happening in this hilarious, like, hijinks script, I was living. And That's I, hilarious. the guy, Shen Drakar, the, one of the broken lizard guys, the Indian yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he met everybody at Hotel Charmant. What is it? Chateau Marmont. Marmont. Sorry. Yeah. I'm from Jersey. I don't know this Hollywood stuff. You guys. You've lived out here for you 50 guys. years. You're yeah, but I'm on the west side, yeah. man. It's like being in a bubble. I went to the beach with my two-year-old today. Like We, we were like doing diamond push-ups in the sand. So, uh, yeah. And he had a meeting and I'm like, I'm, you know, you don't understand. Like I'm living this. I'm, this is actually my life. I like the script. It's funny. I could do it. And he goes, you'd be great for it. And then Justin Long sits down. He made the meetings too close together. Uh, but no. then he didn't like, but he didn't jettison me out. Then me and Justin Long are like, awkward hello. He's holding a motorcycle helmet. And he's like, hey, what's up? And he's like, we're all, and he like waved Justin Long over. And then we're all just sitting at one table talking about the same script, realizing neither one of us have the part at this point. That's hilarious. Very weird. Space it out. Whenever you meet a director, I've had that kind of thing. I had that happen with John Mayer once. I, yeah, it was a John Mayer. I was I was gonna say like I was gonna say someone else. I was gonna make up a story, but no, it was John Mayer. And like I, I remember. Give me was, the made up version first, and I'll try to guess which one's real. Who was who was I just gonna make up and say that I met Scott Baio? I think like no, I can't even remember. I I just slipped my mind, but I was I was going through my head the Rolodex like was it Justin Timberlake? Was it? And then I picked somebody in my head, and I was like, it was that guy? And then yeah. before I said it, I realized it wasn't that guy at all. <laughs> it was John Mayer. I remember it was John Mayer, and uh, and I don't. I just re- I had a meeting with him, and I showed up at like the restaurant, was, like Beverly Hills Hotel or something like that, and uh, and he was sitting with somebody else, so I just like sat <laughs> sat in another table for a while till they got up. What was the meeting? What, what was he doing? Are you- were you going to be a dancer in one of his videos? No, he was going to do, I think, like a Off sketch, like a he he was he was maybe going to do a a special kind of thing that had comedy in it. Yeah, and he is like obsessed about comedy. Yeah, he it almost seems like the more he tries to do things that aren't just playing guitar and writing your body's a wonderland, people loathe him for doing anything outside of their comfort I, zone. I think for people him. feel that way about everybody, though. It's you like, think so? Yeah, I think if you you know if you went on tour like. And, like when you know, Eddie Murphy put out an album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny all the time. I mean, I don't think – it's like – I think the best you can hope is to be like the Bacon Brothers. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, State people Farms. Kinda, yeah, State just, Farms. Why can't I talk tonight? <laughs> State Fairs. I'm saying State Farms. They do insurance commercials. Yeah, it is weird like the Bacon Brothers. Like do you – if you're the other Bacon, the lesser than yeah. Bacon, it, it'd be like Alec touring with like Danny. yeah. And like they're just doing, yeah, we're just going to workshop it. It's going to be fine, <laughs> JJ. But the other Bacon guy has to know, like, the only reason anyone's here is because this guy was, you know, it's Kevin Bacon. Right. What, do you even know the other Bacon brother's name? Um, Crispy. I like the stare. <laughs> you stared me down like we were, yeah. about, we were about to touch his gloves. Name, Crispy Bacon. Lane, his name is not Crispy Bacon. It is Crispy Bacon. It's uh, Kevin and Crispy <laughs> and uh, Matthew and Modine. And then, yeah, it is. It, yeah, I think you're right. That's So I answered my own question because you helped me. So John Mayer, why do they always say when you audition for a movie or a TV show, they always go like, uh, Morgan, you got to meet him between one and two at mm-hmm. the Beverly Hills Hilton because then he's leaving town. And so he's like, well, we're in Hollywood. Where is this showbiz mecca that every director like? Then he goes to Cor- Conroe, Texas. That's where showbiz headquarters is. He's only in L.A. for one hour Tuesday. I think when people get really successful, they're either here or somewhere else. Right, like the people think... that you, the people that you have to like, really uh, work around their schedule. They they're out in like Montana or something. But don't like you work on two broke girls yeah. and you're a full time writer and that's a wildly successful show. Do you think that people that audition for two broke girls, their agents are telling them it's Wednesday and then they leave town, then they got to go, then they're they are in Eau Claire, Wisconsin for their hiatus? I guess you're right. No, I'm asking you. Am I? I don't know. Um. Do we, you mean like, do they, because I don't know which one you're talking, you're talking about the people who audition, or you're talking about us? Like, Has it ever happened to you, where you were told, two times, we'll do two different ways, has it ever happened to you, where someone's told you, 
you got to meet them because they're leaving town. Yes. Which I find that it's just bullshit because they're not leaving L.A. Because L.A. is where you put showbiz together. Yeah. It's not like you don't understand. This whole thing's being this, – this Mission Impossible 3 is getting put together in Reno. Don't ask any questions. That's just how it goes. But that's what they always say. And then the second part of the question is have you found or are you privy to information on two broke girls where they tell actors like you, you got to come in Monday because then everybody's leaving town? No, but that we, we clearly wouldn't be leaving town. We're show based. We, I mean, that we have offices and stuff. So they only just said it to me. Well, no. I mean, they, did you? Have, you didn't have to go to like a place that has an office and space that's permanent. We don't like all. You know, there's like 15 of us. We'd all have to like be getting on a plane and leaving together. Well, that, ha- that would lead to the disillusionment of their leaving town. That right. Would exactly. Feed into. So the answer is no. The answer is no. I realized as it was rolling out of my mouth, I was thinking to myself. It's a sitcom, stupid. No one's going anywhere. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Is there anybody in the room? It would be set? fun to travel with it, though. It would, would be traveling fun. Take it on the road like dinner theater? Yeah. Would Garrett Morris be on time, though? Garrett Morris is always on time. Is he really? He was late one time. What was the reason? Diabetes. Um, <laughs> I think he just forgot what time it started, which you can, you can allow a man of his age to do that, I think. How old is Garrett Morris? Uh, he's like 75 or something. Really? I think so. Black don't crack. He looks no, maybe good. He, he might, maybe he's a little younger. He looks great. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Amy Schumer uh, wants to marry you. Are you aware of this? No. She was here last week. And We're not she allowed to come, legally yet. Yeah, which is kind of absurd. But that, she uh, she looks nothing like Joachim Noah. I'm sorry. She's cute. She, uh, yeah, if you like girls, yeah. I guess. What do I know? But she did a whole follow Friday thing on Twitter, and then she goes, but I just want to F Morgan Murphy and oh, marry her. That's so sweet. Uh, and then she did a Morgan Murphy impression. What did it, was it just, I, I, every time someone's on an impression of me, I'm, I'm mortified, but go ahead. Uh, and now I'm sitting with you right now, yeah. and I'm real, at the time I was like, wow, that's really good. But now I'm just sitting here talking to Morgan Murphy, I'm like, no, it was close. She just sounded drugged. She just... It, yeah, there was there was like a lisp that you yeah. don't have. I have a little bit of a lisp. And a frown that you don't have. Oh, really? But I think that's more stage Morgan Murphy. Yeah. When you talk about your mom, you instantly start and I bending add on over. That, and I had on that lisp for the stage. Lisp. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great if I had a stage lisp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> How often do you uh, go up? Um, it depends. Like when I'm working, sometimes I'll go weeks without going up. And then I'll try to just cram like, you know. Like three, if I get like three sets in a week, that's a big week for me because it's just so hard to, it's so hard to play, not to get out and do sets, but you call in your avails, you know, if you're a comic Friday or Monday or whatever, I don't know what my week's going to be like. Right. So I can't call in avails for most weeks unless I know it's like a hiatus week where we get out early. So it's just, it's really rough. And, uh, and sometimes I can, there are some rooms I can kind of show up at last minute, but You sound to be more, you and I seem to be alike where it's like some comics are, I don't know if I believe them, but they, they're like, oh man, I got to get up there. I just got to go up every night or I'm not sharp. And I'm like, if I'm working on a movie or something, I'm not even thinking about stand up comedy at all because I'm kind of on this pirate ship to drift at sea. If you're on two broke girls and you're in the middle of it and you're getting a nice check and then you go home and you're surfing in Malibu, you're not really going, (laughs) if only I was doing 15 minutes at the comedy store, my life would be complete. I I would love to be able to get up more. It's just, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work with my schedule and it doesn't work. I can't, you can't leave your job to say I have a set and you don't want to call people and bail on sets all the time. So you just walk into the Melrose Improv and say, (laughs) Jay Moore sent me. What what, what would happen? I don't know. (laughs) People would talk. If Morgan Murphy, like no one would ever like, and there's no like chart in their minds where you and I connect yeah. in any dimension whatsoever. Yeah. If you just like, yeah, Jay Moore just said I come in and go up. So when do I go up? <laughs> and they were like, no, you can't. You're like, no, you don't understand. Jay Moore said I can go up. I call him JJ because yeah. he's John Jr. And we've known each other for months. <laughs> we've known each other for days. I, tonight you can go. It's a I'll fraud. try it's it. A, I'll try it tonight on my way home. Yeah, just do it. Just boss the move. Just get in there and be like, yeah, I'm sorry. Is Dan here? Rita, Jay Moore told me to come by and you put me right up. You know what? It would work, I bet. Yeah. It would work because they'd be so freaked out. Because I like I like the pie I chart. I bump like D'Elia and Chris Rock's area. So everyone's, they just throw me on. I got bumped. <laughs> yeah. 
They just redid the whole Melrose Improv. That's why I heard they're doing a whole bar lounge thing or it's something. It's very nice, but everybody signed the old bar, but then some people were just hammered and signed it 40 times, and I thought, I think I'm going to stand out by not signing the bar. Really? Yeah. When Did it you says, go Sunday or something? Did you go? I was going to go. I do every Tuesday, oh, and okay. then every, and if you ever want to come by, go up and do time on oh, Tuesday. Oh, thanks. I mean, sure. <laughs> I would love it. I mean, I've, I, been, I've I like actually been comment. going up more lately because I'm taping the, that hour thing. So I've been trying now, when to. Is, you're t- where are you taping the hour? And it seems like you're in a, a, a tough spot because you're not you're not able to go out as much because you have right. a full-time job. But yeah. then all of a sudden, wh- where will your hour be? I'm just doing it myself at that Nerd Melt, the Meltdown Comics yeah. place. Uh, and uh, it's going to be, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm excited about it, but I'm. Ner- that's like particularly why I'm nervous. So I'm going down to San Diego Sunday to do hours down there and then come up here and we do hour at the ice house. And how do just- you know you have an hour unless you've been up cracking it out? Or is that what the San Diego trip? That's is what for? San Diego trips were. But I have, I have, I've been doing like, you know, I've been doing 45 to an hour at randomly when I can. And like last hiatus, you know, doing it for weeks at a time on the road. So like when I get time off, I'll go try to do the road. Uh, as much as I can. And so I know, you know, it's just 13 years in. I have, you know, I mean, I recorded a CD in 2006. What was, I, it, what was that called? I never put it out. Whoa. Yeah. So, like, I did an That'd hour be a then. That'd great name for a CD, by the way. What? That'd be a great name for a CD. Yeah. Morgan Murphy, I never put it out. <laughs> it's, uh, I think I'll end up putting out some of it. I just, I, 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 it's so weird. I was talking about this in like therapy today, actually, about like the difference between me then and me now is like at this point, I just have to give it to somebody and let them do it. Because if I'm allowed to watch it or see it or listen to it, I'll decide it's not good enough. And I I'll... record almost every set now on my iPhone, yeah. and I will listen to about ten minutes, and I'll go, I can't. It's heartbreaking. It's awful. It's awful. It's the worst. And I was just I, there. It may, I I can't believe that I'm listening to something people came to see. <laughs> like when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, other people had to hear this. Like it's really. It's, I like what. See, that's where you and I part ways. I I'm very full of myself. Yeah. And I my self esteem is terrific. My she thinks that I'm an actor that is a, that learned how to do comedy, and I I think I was born a comic. But she said I don't have any of the holes in me that yeah. every comic needs to fill. Yeah. So, but then I listen to my set and I'm like, this is just fucking stupid. And I'm going too fast and like I'm kind of embarrassed. Yeah. I'm just driving home alone embarrassed by myself. Yeah. But I know I need to listen to it because there's new stuff and there's ad libs that yeah. I need to just make the snowball bigger and rounder. But when you go to therapy. That's what I'm trying to do now about yeah. like stuff, I guess. So it's really we all just have a half hour, but we just keep tagging, tagging, yeah. tagging until it's an hour. Yeah. And, by then, tagging, or, and I mean, then finding out like a, a segue. You're like, oh, those two go together yeah. if I just sew them. You yeah, know, if I sew those two threat? jokes together. That's, yeah, so it's kind of fun to figure out when that happens. How often do you go to therapy? Every week, but I missed like the last two weeks. And then, you, then you do two hours in a row. No, I just I just went it's in fifty and minutes. Told her I forgot instead of the one hour. It's under the illusion of one hour, but at fifty minutes it they kick you out. Minutes, so there's no yeah. so you don't bump into Justin Long in the waiting room. <laughs> there's a I go to this like new therapist in Glendale and. uh and it's just like I used to go in Brentwood and, you know, it's just a different clientele in the waiting room. It's real interesting. People with actual problems in Glendale? Uh, I, yeah, I think people with actual problems, you know, mm. it's like a, it's just like a room on the freeway. In Glendale. Just like the freeway's going by and I, it's it's a little bit more low rent, but I like it. She's good. It's a good lady. When I went to therapy, when I had panic attacks, she told me not to come back because she gave me a prescription that helped my panic attacks. And then I Xanax? said... Uh, when I fly, but then I don't like taking it because I get anxiety ridden that I'm going to get addicted to Xanax. Yeah. So I'd rather just, I just get on the plane and I close my eyes and I fall asleep with Klonopin. And then when the Klonopin started working, I went to her to tell her, she, I went back in a week yeah. and she goes, how's it going? I said, it's great. And then she goes, oh, okay. Uh, and I said, so I do I come back next week? Because I only know from television. Yeah. You lay down. First of all, I wanted to see her. It sounds like you went to a psychiatrist. I went to a psychiatrist, yeah. psychopharmacologist. So, like, you went to someone who pretty much does meds and doesn't do, like, yeah, like talking. The, yeah, but I didn't know that. And I was uh, really disappointed. I'm used to, like, the New Yorker cartoon yeah. where the guy's laying on the couch and she's in, like, a chicken suit going, well, we've tried everything. You need a therapist who doesn't prescribe medication. I mean, you don't need one. I'm not saying you need one, yeah, but like, you could help. Yeah, what do you help. mean by that? Yeah. 
So you go to a psychologist. I go to both, yeah. What do you mean both? You go to one person for your medication, one person for your chit-chat. But don't you feel for your psychologist that at some point you're smarter than the psychologist and you realize that you could be a psychologist just yes. because you're running circles around this person? Yes. Once you get them caught up on you, you, there's really nothing to talk about. Yeah, but I think it's especially important for like someone like me. Like I live alone. Like other than being at work, I'm I'm alone a lot. Like I, I kind of like sort of a homebody. So... She's the only person I really talk to about the stuff in my head out call loud. Me. You want me to call? You? Yeah, <laughs> that would be a new podcast. No, I mean, just if, me just, if you ever just want to just say what's <laughs> up, if you're just someplace and feel shitty, just call yeah. me. I'm being completely Maybe serious. No, I just found that it helps. I've been going for so long, and I found like when I don't go, and I'm free. I get worse. You know, you get worse, yeah, because you, you keep introverting and introverting. Yeah, I get worse, and then I go, ah, I should go back, and then I go back, and so it's just like trying to keep it consistent, even when you don't want to go. I never want to go ever. Like it's like working. I never want to do it, but I try to do it. So it's like the universe is unfolding all the time, but if you don't go to therapy, you keep contracting and folding in on yourself all the time. Yeah, I just like internalize everything. But what's weird to me, Morgan, is you do stand up. You're super funny. Like you are actually funny. Like you're an actual, just you're just a comic, oh, thank and you. then you write on a show that's not going anywhere, so you're validated there. And then we were talking off mic about how you'll just rent a spot and you'll go surfing. Yeah. So that that those are not the actions of somebody that needs to go to therapy from two different people twice. But a that week. is like therapy. Like all those things are, you know, like getting. I'm like I do like get hotel rooms in L.A. a lot. Yeah. And like to me, that's like it's the same th- thing that like therapy would. It's just I don't know. It's all stuff that. I think as you get older, you find things that make you, uh, I don't even want to say happier, but that like help you deal with your stress. And, uh, it's all the same stuff, like going and renting, you know, going surfing or like going and staying at a hotel in West Hollywood for no reason. Like we do that a lot. Yeah. I like it. Especially if you have a kid, you, my advice to any parent once a month, just give it to your parents and just go to a hotel room. Close the blinds yeah. and just catch up on all your movies for 48 hours. Never get out of bed. Yeah. Room service, open door in your pajamas. Sounds more fun when you're with a person. I just do it so solo. <laughs> you're bumming me out. <laughs> it's all right. It's fun. I mean, it's, it's but nice. But text I me like where it. you are and I'll at least text something like amusing about that okay. place. Like, le- like, uh, like, there's so many. Like, I know you're friends with Amy Mann. You were yeah. in that video I saw. Yeah. When I was looking up all things Morgan yeah, Murphy. She's, she's, she's my best, my bestie. Is that Jer- what they say? Jerry Maguire soundtrack. Uh, she was on. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. I no, like, yeah. you, they, you I got was cut on the out. Jerry Maguire uh, soundtrack. Yeah, your spoken word. It was odd. It just didn't fit. It was just weird. A little kid's talking about the human head weighs eight pounds. And you're like, well, uh, you know, beneath the wheel could be interpreted many ways. You, <laughs> Yeah, you have all these people. Why am I like being your life coach? You know, if you just yeah, want to do all these I, things, I'm do not all asking to be coach. I, I no, like, I know you yeah, were. I'm realizing like, like I'm I'm just completely glomming onto you. The hotel thing is like a new thing. I realize. I think because this is this is like totally honest. When you start working on a show and making a a good amount of money, I mean, it's certainly more money than most people you know make. Uh, like for me, I had to start justifying the justifying why I'm there, I guess. And part of that is spending the money in ways that make me happier, but not spending the money in ways that like make me happier for a second. Like, like I realize that staying at hotels and like getting away for a day refreshes me and makes me kind of feel better overall, as opposed to like going and buying shoes or something like that. But what do you do when you're in the hotel that makes you feel so much better? Um, I don't know. I mean, I get a lot of hotels out in like Santa Monica and then I like go in the morning and try to take a surfing lesson. That's kind of been this and year. And then just nap. And then na- watch I TV. Do. I mean, there's, I was at a hotel, like I watch a lot of sports and I was watching, um, I was watching when the NCAA, when during in March, I was watching like, I was in a hotel in Santa Monica in the bathtub watching the basketball game. And Shutters. I was like, t- and I texted Noah uh, Shangri-La, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think Shangri-La. Yeah. Let's just go with it. Hey, why not? Yeah. And, um, Put and that I, up on the board. Buddy. Yeah. It was Shangri-La, Shangri-La Huntley. One of those. Story, yeah. And, um, you know, so I'm just like, I'm like, oh, I'm in, I'm in John a bathtub in on the beach yeah. watching a basketball game. Like it just feel, and it feels like a vacation because I live far enough away that like it's an hour drive, 45 minute drive. I don't know. This is boring. No, it's not boring. Really? You don't pull the plug on yourself. <laughs> it's compl- it's but no, it's not. I won't let you get away with that. But yeah, but then I but then I have this whole 
uh, this is so weird. I have this whole thing where like when I buy things or spend money on things, like I'm renting a house on the beach next week in San Diego when I'm go do sets down there. And when I do stuff like that, I have this whole thing where I like, I'm grateful to have a job so that I have money to do this. Like, sure. But I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. It's not frivolous. I know. I mean, it's just you like, didn't spend any money up until like two broke girls. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I worked on Kimmel. I worked on Fallon. I had jobs and stuff in between crank then. Anchors. But crank anchors. Do you ever want to be on one of those shows? Like, do you sit on the sidelines and go, I'd like to be one of the waitresses on Two Broke Girls? Like, that's, that's, is that the end game for you? Or do you like being behind the scenes writing stuff so other people can get the laughs? I like doing both. Like, in an ideal situation, there'd be a show where I would be able to write on it and have a small enough part that I could do both. But, uh, what would you play on that show, Morgan Murphy? Um, I have some version of myself because that's my range. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking quote of the show yeah. right there. Hey, 60 seconds. We'll be right back. Dollarshaveclub.com. I use it. It's awesome. And it takes the pain in the ass out of your day. Getting a good shave can be a real pain in the ass. Searching through 50 different brands, matching new blades to old handles, bullshit features where your razor doubles as a flashlight and a vibrating toothpick. Forget it, dude. 20 bucks for new razors? Forget it, dude. Asking a guy to unlock the razors? Forget it, dude. Go to dollarshaveclub.com. Get high-quality razors. I've received these myself. I put my name on it. These are rad. They're great. Smooth, buttery shave. And they're delivered right to your door just for a couple bucks a month. They made it simple. High-quality razors, 100% guaranteed, sent on schedule, so you never have to think about it ever again. Every month, you get a new pack, and every week, you change your blade, and it costs a fraction of what you would pay at retail. I want you to try it. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash J. You'll get a free sample of Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter, which is awesome, with your first shipment, also makes the perfect Father's Day gift. Oh, yeah, Father's Day. Hook him up. Dollar Shave Club, something he can actually use. Support this show. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash J-A-Y or click the Dollar Shave Club banner on jmore.com. This is the real deal. Great product. I use it every damn day. Dollarshaveclub.com. All right. So, Jock and Noah, yeah. you think is hot. And I said to you, his father, I know, Yannick Noah, was like a super gorgeous guy yeah. when he played tennis. Yeah. And you said your taste in guys is really weird. My wife says Ray finds in Schindler's List when he's fat. Really? Like that's like uber hot. And, um, and uh, you know, she also, like Steve Buscemi, she's always thought it was hot. I just, I don't know. I just have like, I don't know, my taste in, I don't, I don't, I just don't have great, you know, taste in dudes. Well, it's great taste for you if you, that's what you think is attractive. But what is it? Is it Joachim Noah, the way he rebounds? Like, there has to be something other... Oh, are we other... recording again? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were actually taking a break. No, that's just... Yeah. We put commercials in. Otherwise, it's all like six minutes of commercials in oh, the front. Oh, I thought this was like chit-chat during the commercial. And that's I was like, good. Oh, that's okay. good that you think that's how comfortable yeah. it is here. I don't know what you're doing on everybody else's podcast, but here we just <laughs> chit-chat and we hang out and we talk about your cool Oregon hat, which I believe that's a rainbow trout. On the top of your hat. Probably. I got it on eBay and I won it for $10 on eBay and I'm pretty, I was really excited about it's it. It's a good hat. I'm, I'm very excited about the Damian Lillard Rookie of the Year uh, situation. I'm excited about Matthew Lillard maybe getting another Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah. Both yeah. of them. Maybe the two of them It's a big year together. for both of them. <laughs> Damian can play Scrappy-Doo yeah. <laughs> and Matthew Lillard can just stick to his role. <laughs> Who's your, oh, so you're a big Portland Trailblazers fan then? I'm like a... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a like I'm not a statistician about like any sports and stuff, but I was born in Portland. I like have my heart's in Portland, so like Clippers and Blazers are kind of my. The Blazers teams. are a team like when I see them, they have so much talent on the court. I don't know why they suck. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's heartbreaking because the because there's no better fans than like Portland fans, like like fans at the, the Rose, Rose Garden. Garden. Yeah. But I don't know why they were bad this year. I think next year they'll be really, really good. Yeah. There's a lot of young teams that I feel like will be better. They always say in sports, youth is completely overrated. Like when the Patriots were banging out those Super Bowls, like Tom Brady was really the only like young guy. Yeah. Like Teddy Bruschi and all those linebackers were like old ass men and Vince yeah. Wilfork. Yeah. And- Especially at playoffs, I feel like experience is, experience really counts. But you're really about, <laughs> you're about the fights. 
I like the yeah. I love boxing. I don't know why. I like started Did you watch it with your dad as a kid. No, no. I my your dad. Mom. I grew up with my mom, so I I my mom never watched it. I guess my grandpa watched it. I heard. I don't know. I mean, but I no one ever. I started working out at the Wild Card Gym here in L.A. Freddie Roach's gym, and I was working out there for a few years. And I just hold got, on. Just stop yeah. for a second. You're you're admittedly a, a depressed person. Yeah. With low self esteem, that's kind of bummed out. But you, in the last 14 minutes, you've said all things I wish yeah. I was doing. Do you I understand mean, that? You have a full-time job writing for Yeah, a but I got really depressed and stopped boxing and haven't been back in years. Okay, but you so. were depressed and started boxing. Sure. You're depressed and you surf. Yeah. You're renting a beach house in San Diego yeah. to work out your new hour for shits and giggles. Yeah. And then you're going to go at Nerdist, uh, Nerd yeah. Melt, which is Chris Hardwick's yeah. room, to do like your new hour. These are all things... They're like, I wish I was doing. But it's all stuff I'm calling that... Barry Katz going, when the fuck do I put up my new hour? I'm ready. Yeah, but I'm, I'm doing the hour. I'm financing myself and putting it up myself and stuff. And, and that's something I I should have done five years ago, you know, four years ago. I just, I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And finally, I just said, like, I have to do it and give myself a deadline to do this. And then the other stuff is, you know, I've been, I mean, as far as depression and stuff, I've been dealing with that for so long that it's almost like work. It's like I have figured out things that I know I have to do because I've gone through periods where I haven't done any of them. Like I, you know, if it don't work out for a long time or I don't do something for myself that's like nice for a long time, I know that the result is so horrific that I have to do this stuff. How horrific? I don't know. Like, I've never been depressed. It's, it's, you know, for me, it gets bad. Like it gets, you know, it gets, to the end bad so really yeah yeah so oh. it's like what's the yeah i don't know it just i i've I, the last i would say three four years since i was six fifteen sixteen kind of dealing with it like actually medically the last three or four years have been pretty good because i've i just said screw it with the like oh, i'm gonna go off my medicaid like everything that you do where you say i'm gonna go off my medication and yeah, like it doesn't really work you know, out fuck usually. this yeah. and i'm gonna live like this like it it's never worked for me and it's been destructive. And I mean, not that I live a great, super healthy life. I drink and I smoke and I, you know, yeah, but, but you're, you're wild card gym boxing, Malibu surfing. Yeah, I try, I try to do things that will keep me from killing myself. <laughs> How would you kill yourself? Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm on the 10th floor of my building, so I'd probably just, just oh, take, a, just take a leap. You're just in a Stephen Hawking's chair the rest of your life. Like I, I almost did it. If only I was on the 15th floor. Oh, you thought I was deadpan before. <laughs> <laughs> he cheated on his wife, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Do you find that fascinating? Like the, yeah. the, 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 there's like specials on TV. Why men cheat? He's a genius. Hey, people are going to, people want to fuck him. I, I mean, uh, that's, right, there's is nothing. Is he on your list next to Jock No, but there's and... kind of nothing better than a, than a genius. That's the sexiest thing in the world, I think. Yeah, but he what one that drools. Yeah, but I know stupid people who drool. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But the fact that he found a woman to marry him. Yeah. And he can only talk through a computer, like he's on like OK Computer mm-hmm. Radiohead, like better, happier, more productive. <laughs> suck it, suck it, suck it. And then he probably acts like it's a mistake to his nurse. Yeah. But then he cheated on it twice. Like I mean, even Stephen Hawking yeah. is like a baller. A baller, or just like a dirt bag, you could say. Like, yeah, it's ama- like yeah. it's unbelievable. He's still a man. He's like this one of the smartest men in the history of the universe, and he's still a man. I need. I have needs. <laughs> That's Morgan after she jumps out the tenth floor. In Man- <laughs> We're tenth floor in Manhattan or L.A. No, 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 L.A. Yeah, you wouldn't die at all from a tenth floor in L.A. Yeah, I would. Actually, you would. Yeah. Like it's like this. What's the ground softer? <laughs> no, I made a mistake. <laughs> I was thinking. I, I was like, no, that won't you even. You know how it. LA's all squishy. Yeah, you know that. Yo, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yo, in LA, you walk and it's all soft as shit. <laughs> Marshmallow floors in LA. Shit, ain't that a bitch? <laughs> World star hip hop, son. Oh, speaking of, you follow Bossip on Twitter, and I'm gonna. You have Twitter skills. Some yeah. people like I am Colin Quinn. Colin is the all time. He's, he's the best. He's one Twitter. Nobody he's, comes close. He's so funny. And by the way, I think one of the most underrated comedians I agree. working. Like one of the funniest people. When I moved to New York, he was like the first comic I saw where I was like, 
Well, now I'm glad I live in New York because I get to watch this. Like, yeah, he's amazing. It's he's one of the only guys that has absolutely his own rhythm. Yeah, it, it's it's like we all have this rhythm, and even if as different as you are as a comic, there's still a rhythm you can apply it to a person before you. You're yeah. the, there's a predecessor. Yeah, and with Colin, there's no. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Like there's no predecessor whatsoever. He'll just go up on stage and go like, "You guys hear about? <laughs> they stole the art at the jail." <laughs> How do they know it was stolen and replaced it with a fake? That means some guy knelt to pray and went, Padre, this is inauthentic. <laughs> and I'm like watching this at Caroline's, like just him being a cholo at Rikers Island going, this is inauthentic. <laughs> like he's, he wins Twitter. He likes boxing too, which is great. He's like, a huge, really he used to fight at Gleason's way. gym. And then I once, him and I were at a club. I took him to that Glovekin fight. You did? Yeah, we were like socking each other. Like it was such a great Ooh. fight. Yeah, he's biting his hand. I don't know how. I, I don't even know why this guy's still standing. <laughs> you, this is you'll like this. Colin, I looked up to so much, and it's like people you idolize, but you hold. You, you got to yeah. hold your shit together because you want to be cool and hang out of with course. them more. And uh, he's, I, I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, I box. I knew he boxed from a friend who boxed with him, and I go, I box. He goes, where do you box? I go, Gleason's gym. He goes, that's where I box. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Bobby McQuilla, like my friend, he's training this guy that trained somebody, trained somebody. And he goes, oh, my God, that's that's like incredible lineage. We have Bobby <laughs> McQuilla. He taught Ali to swivel. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. And he goes, what size gloves do you wear? And I had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. And I go, eight ounce gloves, which eight ounce <laughs> gloves are like ski yeah. mittens. And he goes, oh, my God, what are you guys doing out in the parking lot? That is crazy. <laughs> and he could have completely aired me out, but maybe he really believed – that this like twenty year old kid from yeah, Jersey's like, no, really no, nah, nah, give me the eight ounce gloves. Yeah, ever someone's getting cut. That's like what a girl does to like g- g- like be part of her boyfriend's interests. Like that's what you were doing. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, no, I love them. I love it. Yeah, Gle- and like I named the gym. I, I went. Like, I've been to Gleason's. I like it. Is that where Tyson had the gun in his mouth by Teddy Atlas? Oh, I don't know. Do you know that story? I know the I, I know the story, but I don't know if that's. It's amazing how Mike, they took everyone away from him that caused him fear piece yeah. by piece. Anybody that told him like, hey, man, get your shit together yeah. and get dressed. We're going home. They're like, you're fired. Yeah. You're fired. Anybody that put doubt in his mind, they just created a savage beast. Having your own receptionist, that would be great and all. But paying their salary, that's expensive. That's why thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs are now using e-voice to enhance their image, work faster, make more money. That's what you got to do. You got to make more money. You can try eVoice right now for free. Did you hear what I just said? Free. It's free, bro. eVoice right now is free when you go to eVoice.com and use the promo code J, as in my name, J-A-Y. With eVoice as your virtual assistant, you get your own toll-free number, dial by name directory, all your calls will be professionally answered and routed wherever you want. eVoice even types out all your voicemail messages and emails them to you instantly, just like with a real receptionist, but without having to pay a receptionist. You know what I mean? That's a pain in the neck. Forget that lady. Just use eVoice. With eVoice, your toll-free number and virtual assistant start at 10 bucks a month. That's it, my man. 10 bucks a month. You can operate like a boss, stay lean like a startup, and blow away your competitors. eVoice has been mentioned as a key tool for today's businesses in both Inc. magazines and Forbes. I believe in eVoice. I want you to try eVoice. And eVoice is free right now for 30 days. Go to eVoice.com, promo code J-A-Y. eVoice.com, promo code J, or just go to jmore.com and click the eVoice banner right now. eVoice, like a boss. I love that Guerrero. I was just thinking about the Guerrero clip you showed. Ruben Guerrero. Uh, by the time this airs, this fight will be have done. Will have yeah. been finished. Oh, should I not have brought it up? No, it's fine. And uh, Guerrero's son will have been knocked out by Floyd Mayweather. Why couldn't Mayweather and Pacquiao get it together? Who do you think Morgan Murphy was ducking? Who? I think Mayweather's ducking. Why? I just if think you really have that much I, bravado. I, don't, I honestly don't know if he would duck. I, I don't know if the fight is as important now as it would have been a year ago, two well, years ago, obviously. Not. But but I mean, but I just, went to sleep. I just think that he thought this is a guy who can beat him. I really do. That's 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 what I believe. But I mean, I also have like allegiance. Like I love Freddie, and I've yeah. Freddie used to let me watch Manny train, and it was like the coolest thing in the world. So like I love him so much. What's the intensity like when you're in the wild card gym and you're watching a guy like Pacquiao train? Does the does the actual energy change? 
in the room, like when you watch greatness at that, that yes. level. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's like just, Jane's addic- Addiction taking the stage and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, if you like Jane's Addiction, absolutely. Or, uh, I, I, no, I'm, no. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to read your mind. It's um, like when Morrissey hits the stage no, at Hammerstein I, Ballroom I, and, you're, and the <laughs> um, um, Do I get another one? You can get another one. It's like one. when Shooter Jennings takes the stage. <laughs> Shooter Jennings. At Nerd Mouth. <laughs> I'm just trying to make you laugh. Um, no, it's a cra- it's, it's it's amazing. Like to watch those guys like work and spar, and then you just I, I don't know. I've never seen more discipline in any kind of athletics than people training for a fight. It's so nuts. I never sparred. I just fought. I just worked out there. Amy Mann too, and uh, and I don't even understand how they do it. It's like a Voices dedicated. Voices carry. <laughs> don't tell me about Amy Mann. Um, but, uh, who's that guy with her in the video? I always like, I was like, dump to zero, get with the hero. I was like 15 years old really? watching the till Tuesday video going, she shouldn't be with that guy at the opera. She should be with me <gasps> and we'll, we'll get out of this place. You know, you, you want know, me to tell her that? Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Get her in here. Is she here now? She'll she's do in it. Car? She's really? in my car. Yeah. <laughs> she's in your car. She's waiting in my she's car. You all truck. That guy let his kids out. I hope he <laughs> listens to this podcast. The fucking creep. <laughs> By the way, you know what I love about the Guerrero thing too? I was just thinking is like I love how many boxers' dads are getting into the mix now. Like that's a great that's Let like a great element. For, of, yeah, because it's like his dad, like Garcia's dad. Yeah, you're like, right. Uh, and Mayweather's dad, even yeah, like say, you know, used forget, to, like Mayweather everyone's Floyd's dad like, started it all. Now they should just have a thing where all the dads fight. Let me say, oh my god, the senior league. That would Let be me phenomenal. set this up for everybody. Uh, Guerrero is fighting uh, Mayweather. The fight will have had happened. When, uh, by the time this goes on, I'll just hold the mic with my hands. Maddie, do you have the blue mic or the red mic? I don't, blue mic. Oh, yeah, we should switch that. So, this is, uh, Ruben Guerrero. His son is fighting Floyd Mayra, uh, Mayweather. His son is Robert Guerrero. Do you know who he lost to? He's 31 and 1. I do not know who I he lost know. to. I don't know. All right. So, he's, uh, he's going to get his ass destroyed. I think but, he will, yeah. yeah. So, here is his father, who looks alarmingly like Cheech Marin in a Red Freak sketch. But he's also like, he's kind of straight out of like American Me. Like, he's just like Danny like, Trejillo. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. I like, all right. But I want the listeners to uh, see if this will work. The fact that he starts it by saying, I don't talk shit. And then, here you go. Let's see. Tepid applause. And uh, May 4th, baby, you guys going to find out. You know, uh, everything we do, my son's blessed. I'm blessed. No matter what I am, I am what I am. And uh, I'm the oh, real boy. deal. And uh, I don't talk shit, man. I back it up. <laughs> I back it up, baby. Anytime, anywhere, like I said. And uh, we're going to beat up that woman beater. The one that beat up his wife, man. His wife in front of his kids. You guys like that shit? <laughs> like this guy, woman beater? He must have learned that from his dad. Woman beater, baby. We're going to beat that woman beater. See how he's going to like it. He's going to give it from a real man. Damn woman beaters. We're going to beat that woman beater down. You guys hear me? What I said, baby. I like the guys in the background going, man, sit your ass down. Yeah. Shut your mouth, man. Goes, You're about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you about to cry. You was crying like a pussy. And he's still talking shit. But uh, Morgan Murphy, you may have had the idea of the century is fathers of fighters yeah. fighting. So you get who who has the Danny Garcia's dad, right? It's the uh is the uh like Danny the, Garcia? Uh, not Dan, uh, Danny uh, died, didn't uh, he? No, no, no. Uh, what's his name? Uh, who am I thinking You are of? the quickest looker-upper on a phone I've ever seen in my <laughs> really? life. Like, you're like Garcia from Criminal Minds. While you're looking at that, uh, go to jmore.com. Yeah, click yeah, the Amazon yeah. banner, like our friend Tom Pellegrino. JJ, I'm in charge of our company's wellness program. We have on-site yoga, Pilates, and boot camp. And our yoga mats were starting to look a little ratty. So what did I do? I went to jmore.com and clicked on that Amazon link. I ordered 20 yoga mats. Whoa. Two oscillating fans and five <laughs> jumbo packs of Lysol wipes to get the funk off the mats. Later, Tom. So there you have it. That's nice. You do yoga? Um, I've been doing Pilates. Whatever that means. That guy that invented Pilates was a genius. He couldn't like exercise because he was injured from the war, right? I don't know. It's don't on know the history of Pilates. It. It's a big, big show up right now. <laughs> It'll be on right after Bulls Nets. <laughs> um, <laughs> history of the Bible. History of the Bible and then history of Pilates. 
And then uh, Pon- it's, uh, between Pontius Pilate and – no, Pilates, I believe, a guy was horribly injured and he couldn't like do crazy exercises. Oh, yeah. So that's why everything's like, so compact and yeah, isolated. Yeah, it's like uh, it's supposed to help you if you're like paralyzed or something. Yeah. I don't know. Which you're emotionally paralyzed. I'm emotionally so paralyzed perfect and for you. physically I'm very close to <laughs> I don't think so. I saw you strutting through the arbor and you're uh, you're very tall and you, you look terrific. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm not lying. That's you're welcome. Yeah, I like hearing that in Santa Monica. That's nice. Well, this is the Palisade, so it's even better. Uh-huh. It's even better. Because Santa Monica. So yoga, I can't do because I forget that uh, I, I like knowing that breathing is an involuntary muscle and I don't like to be reminded of it. Yeah. And so when you're in yoga or like when you get a massage and they go, okay, just give me like a couple deep breaths. I'm like, wow, I'm not, I'm not breathing. Like what's going on? And then, but in yoga, they just keep telling you to breathe and inhale and exhale. But my inhales are way deeper. I, I wrestled, so maybe I, my lung capacity is – well, it is. I'm just, it, it's huge. Yeah. So when everyone else is exhaling, I'm still taking it in. So then I got like hyperventilate to keep up with the class or I'm the lone wolf in the corner when everyone's like downward dog going, whoo, and they just think I'm you know staring at their packages. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, but that's very first world that's problems. That's sad for you, man. So whose father are you talking about? Yeah, it is Danny Garcia's dad. I, I, I was, I was uh, getting nervous that I was out of my mind. But yeah, Danny Garcia's dad is... Uh, so you got Danny Garcia versus Floyd Mayweather Sr. I got Floyd I got, Mayweather Sr. No, no, no. Sr. I got now Guerrero's everyone. dad versus uh, Garcia's dad. I don't see anybody beating Floyd Mayweather Sr. Really? Yes. I don't see anybody doing that. I don't know. What about, I feel what like about there's Cassius a lot of falling Clay down senior? there even without hitting him. I feel like there's a down. lot of falling down. A lot of slipping. Yeah. But this guy had sunglasses on. Like to yeah. watch if you guys want to look up that video, it's Ruben Guerrero. He really looks like he's like doing a sketch about a Mexican boxing <laughs> trainer. Like, I don't talk shit, I back it up. I back it up. It's like you're not fighting Floyd Mayweather, bro. I think Garcia's dad made like a like a racial like slur about uh, Amir Khan. That was what happened. That is right. Yeah. And Amir Khan, everyone had their hopes pinned on him and he lost, right? Yeah, I don't I think he's uh Bromer. How much do you love Bromer? Down. I like him. I like uh I, thought, I like little guy. I like like Abner Mares little... and like yeah. you know uh uh Darchinian, Victor. I like like the weird like I like the Armenian guys yeah. and the Kazakhstani guys and stuff. But I thought Bromer your eyes would have lit up cuz he's so weird. He'll play like Sony PlayStation until they're introducing yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, no. He's And then he just goes downstairs with like, Twizzlers likeable. in his mouth. Yeah. He's straight hood. Yeah, I like him he a lot. He probably has your Jock M Noah uh Le Coq Sportif sneakers <laughs> that you're showing us. <laughs> that I want. Why don't you just buy them? Oh, because they're not available in the France U.S.? I France to send them to me. Yeah, I can't find them. But you can get, like, shit from Hermes. You can't get shit from Le Coq Sportif. Uh, I tried. I tried. Really? I did my best. I looked online. What What happens if I get them delivered to your to your apartment in, uh, where do you live? I live in Los Feliz. What's your I'd, address? I'd be so it's happy. only a quarter million people. <laughs> what if I get them delivered to your house? Um... That would be that'd be incredible. You don't know my shoe size, and it's embarrassing to say on the air. What is it? It's really big. Yeah, well, you have large feet. I see yeah. that. It's like fucking Elton Brand sitting. I know. I wear like twelve in ladies. What is that in a like guy? A t- I wear like a ten and a half, ten, ten but and a half. But you're very and... tall. You're. All, I mean, you're damn near six feet. I know, feet, right? but I had like the same size feet when I was like five three, and it was mortifying. Really? Yeah. The doctors thought I was going to be like six two, six three. And he was almost right. Yeah, but thank God I didn't. I mean, that would have been weird. What? Why? I don't know. There's just something about like being over six foot as a woman, where you just you're, you're that. That's what you are. Like you go from being tall to being like, oh, that girl who's like six four. <laughs> <laughs> like that's who yo. Uh, I think your friends that listen to this and people yeah. that like you that listen to this yeah. will agree with me. You are not nearly as odd as you believe for yourself. Oh, I don't. I never said I was really odd. I just you know. What did I say? Odd. Oh no. What I meant to say was, you're not near, awkward. I don't. You seem awkward. to think that you're, you know, that that there's this thing of you not fitting in and sure. being like this outsider. But like, no, I do it to myself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like literally when you came in the house, it was like, hey, how, like we we met briefly. I think the last time I saw you do stand up comedy live was like four years ago at D- Doug Benson interruption at Upright Citizens Brigade in okay. New York City. Do you remember any of the jokes from your first CD that you didn't release? Uh, and then the follow up question, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I did. Uh, I used to do this joke where I said, uh, "I said, um, oh god, what did I say?" I said, uh, 
I it? wish you just did that for 11 minutes straight. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm trying to think of how the joke starts. I said, um, um, if you're driving and you hit a dog, is it uh, appropriate to get out of the car and say, yo, why you all up in my grill, dog? <laughs> <laughs> why aren't you releasing this? It's funny. I'll really, I'll do something with it. Why don't you just release it? Uh, maybe I will. Where, but you have to name it. I never put it out. Morgan Murphy, I yeah. never put it out. That's a good put name. It out. Maybe I will. Credit I'm pre- you. I'm a pre- I just want to get you those sneakers. All right. I'm so happy you're here doing the podcast. It's so nice and it to took, be here. It was Twitter, people saying, what the fuck's going on? Why aren't you guys getting together? Yeah. And I kept writing, Morgan's been invited. Morgan's been invited. <laughs> and then finally, out of nowhere, you just tweeted me and said, I'm ready to podcast. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I'm on a break from work. I feel all right. I feel like, uh, you know, if people don't like me, I don't care anymore. So that's yeah, why nice. Why should you? Yeah. Now you got two new people that like you. We think you're great. Oh, thanks. And if you're over on the West Side, please text me or call me so we can jump in the ocean. All right. Or if I need just therapy. Yeah. Or just whatever. For real. All right. I mean, there's no reason to not. not. Yeah. We talk, I was at the gas station the other night and we talked for like 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. We were goofing off. And you told me how Jim Florentine... Took me to my first strip club. Yeah. Or like Crank Yankers. I went to my first strip club with the Crank Yankers group in Vegas. And uh, <laughs> and I was, the only, I was the only girl writer. They had a sign on my door that said female writer. And uh, and uh, they took me. And of course, like everyone wants to buy like a 21-year-old girl shots and have and, like buy me lap dances and stuff. Yeah. So everyone's buying me lap Six dances. Six foot redhead. Nothing going Florentine on Florentine just like... Like to, we were giving money to the dance. We go to the part that I don't know the area where the lady's dancing on the stage. I think it's called the stage. The stage. Yeah. And uh, I'm the guessing. lady was so <laughs> wasted, and she just she literally this is was in going Las Vegas? in Vegas. She's okay. like she just kept going. Oh, the Patron. Oh, the Patron. <laughs> And I felt so bad for her, and I started like asking her stuff about her life. And Florentine was like, "Stop talking to her." <laughs> like, Doesn't he sound like Colin? He does. Yeah, they have the similar. So gravel. glad Black Sabbath's getting back together. It's gonna be the best. <laughs> Bill Ward's not on drums, but who cares? They got the guy from Rage Against the Machine. You're basically you're doing color depression, but without the hands. Like with Colin, you do you do a real. You also do like a fay a fay hand. You do like of a. Of course I do. <laughs> Colin's also a little Harvey Keitel. Yeah, they're very similar. I love I love him. They're very similar. <laughs> um, yeah, Florentine. And then you told me he got mad at you in the strip club. Yeah, for talking to the stripper. And like I was trying to, trying to ask her about her life and stuff because I felt bad for her. <laughs> what were we going to do if she just laid it all out for you? Like, I how are you going to remedy this, remedy this poor guy's what point she's, padrone? She's got her tits in my face and she's grinding on me and everyone's watching and I'm like deeply uncomfortable and just yeah. like, oh, so, you know, where'd you go to school? <laughs> fame. She went to fame. <laughs> It was Coco. <laughs> She's got like her MFA or whatever. Is that a thing, an MFA? Yeah, it yeah. is now. All you right. just created a thing. That's the Morgan fucking Murphy. Deg- uh, doesn't even time out. To see MFM. <laughs> MFMD, the Morgan fucking Murphy degree from the School of Hard Knocks. Do you remember her name? Um, I don't know. Drunk Black Chick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to top that. Follow Morgan Murphy's going to be on Twitter all of June. Yeah, most of June, yeah. Yeah. Probably take a couple of days off. Don't miss this. Yeah. Make sure you go to Morgan underscore Murphy. Yeah. She's a very good follow. Live oh, from you're, Indianapolis. You're not from Indianapolis. No, what if I went to, just to do a live month of Twitter from Indianapolis? <laughs> I'm live tweeting. Yeah. yeah. Why, your photography, I meant to get to this earlier. I'm so glad I didn't forget this. You're a great fucking photographer. Thank and you. I remember I followed you on Twitter because you would take photos of uh, like a pen in a pen holder in a guy's shirt pocket sleeping next to you on an airplane but like the Sierra Madre Mountains were out the window yeah. behind you what do you still do photography yeah I love it it's like my favorite hobby is there a place people can I mean people really I, I put a lot look, of stuff on Instagram and, yeah? and um, I have a tum- like a tumbler I haven't put